Good morning, students. Today we begin with the lecture titled Children's Literature Theory and Practice by Felicity A. Hughes. In this essay, Felicity A. Hughes is trying to analyze how children's literature was relegated or segregated to a lower status and how it got excluded from what is known as mainstream literature. He also tries to locate all those social conditions that led to the rise of new forms of literature like novel and children's literature and later he tries to trace a different trajectory of novel towards a respectable status of, of what is known as serious novels and in this process of, uh, of novel becoming a serious novel uh, getting into this category of serious novel there was a parallel development the development in which this children's literature got segregated as as low art something which is popular although it is popular among uh, readers children among children it got this status of of low art so he is trying to address these issues related to children's literature let us begin i have collected all those major points from this essay and have made this powerpoint so please go through the essay first and then come to this lecture where i have collected all those major points as i said earlier here hugh is trying to discuss the dependence between novel and children's literature. He understands that there is a connection between novel and literature and that connection, that dependence created a lot of confusion and that confusion according to Felicity Hughes it actually hamper an attempt to construct theories of children's literature. That kind of connection between novel and children's literature has created certain confusion and that actually prohibit us from creating a theory for children's literature. Actually this essay was written in 1970s so uh, th that is not the case now. He is discussing uh, the, the situation during the 1970s. So let us begin. So as I said earlier there is a connection between novel and literature that is seen in their history as well. It is said that novel came into being in the 18th century so that actually coincided with the uh, emergence of ch children's literature as well. We see that the, um, this first children's book which is a little pretty pocket book intended for the amusement of little master Tommy and pretty Miss Polly with two letters from Jack the Giant Killer. It has a very long title. Actually it can be abbreviated to a little pretty pocket book. It is considered to be the first children's book and it was published in 1744 by as you know it is John Newbery. And this came out within a decade of this novel, Richardson's Pamela, which came out in 1740. So, both developed during the same period, more or less in the same period, both novel and children's literature. And there was this crisis in novel in 1880s. And that crisis also determined the development of 20th century novel. What was that crisis? So, at the end of 1880s, we see that all those 
established Victorian novelists were dead. And all those young novelists, younger group of novelists were entering into the scene and they believe that it is they, they believe that it is time to bring about a new set of attitudes towards fiction. They, they believe that there should be something like a heightened, more serious conception of novel as art. And this change came about in response of all those changing social conditions, changing readership of the novel. Novel being the product of the 18th century did not have that classical status of poetry and drama. Novel, which was actually a product of, of 18th century, it was meant for mass consumption and it is also the period when you understand the social situation during that period, you will understand that it is the period where Mm, all those working class people got access to literary world and there was this universal public education which became pub mm, compulsory for all and children also started reading. So there was this group known as neoliterates, neoliterates which did not have that status of all those elite audience, elite uh, readers during that period. So novel was something which provided entertainment, which was read for leisure for, by these uh, working class people. So, so novel also had this uh, low status inferior status compared to classical uh, classical uh, literature which is poetry drama so in 1880s this young set of novelists they uh, they wanted to bring about a new phase for novels uh, something like heightened more serious conception of the novel as i said earlier it is actually the uh, this change came out in response to changing social conditions and that also resulted in the creation of a separate literary genre known as children's literature. And when you look at the inception of novel in the 18th century, you will understand that novel had been seen in England as family reading. It was meant for family readership. So when all those reviews, all those essays about these novels came when critics wrote about these novels they used these words like young people are youth there was this constant debate on the merits of novels and there was this question of of which novel whether this novel is appropriate for the moral social and literary education of british youth so all those judgment of novels had involved a hypothetical young reader whether it is good for the young reader or not this question was there always when you judge a novel it is something uh, which we see even, which we see even now in the case of films we see that there is this constant question of whether uh, films are providing bad models for youth so there is this constant question whether these art forms art forms is appropriate for the moral social and literary education of youth so that judgment happened with novels too so even though the readers preferred a novel to poetry or drama it actually failed to get that critical and learned opinion it did it didn't gain that critical respectability because because it lacked that classical ancestry of poetry and drama and novel till then was not art but meant for entertainment alone and by 1880s there occurred this crisis there uh, there came a set of uh, young novelists who 
asserted that it is not their responsibility to bring about a moral welfare of nation's youth. They said, they asserted that through their novels, they don't want to uh, create something which is appropriate for, uh, for the youth. They wanted that critical respectability, that learned opinion. They wanted to improve that critical response and they wanted a heightened, more serious conception of novel as art. So they believe that uh, they can't take this burden of, of, of providing moral education to youth. And there arose a new set of novels by 1910, as you see from the works of D. H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, we see that there arose a new set of novels which was known as art of fiction and novels that were referred to as art novels and or serious novels. Novels which don't have that burden of, of providing moral education to nation's youth and they intended to gain critical and learned opinion which, which was only given to poetry and drama. They wanted novel to be seen as an art. And by the turn of the 20th century, there emerged a separate genre that is called children's literature. So, during this period, we have D. H. Lawrence works titled as uh, titled with M, that is meant for mature readers only. You know the works of D. H. Lawrence, D. H. Lawrence, uh, famous ones like Lady Chatterley's Lover, Sons and Lovers. It was completely meant for mature readers. It contained all those taboo topics like. It discussed sex, it openly discussed sex, incest, it discussed religion, politics, etc. So it included all those controversial in, uh, uh, issues, all those taboo topics, so it was only meant for mature readers. And we have on the other side, we have works of famous children's author Edith Nesbitt. Edith Nesbitt, uh, she was a poet first and then she became a child, children's author and she was also a famous political activist. So all those works written by Edith Nesbitt was, uh, had this C written on them. Like it is meant for child readers only. So all those books were categorized based on expected readership. And all those earlier ones, like uh, all men, which is meant for boys of all ages, were over. Earlier, novel had no segregation. Everything can be read by everyone. But now, by uh, 1880s, a young novelist, they said that they can't take this burden of educating the young people, uh, women and children. They need a kind of a freedom. So there was, there occurred a, a, a segregation where novel becomes serious novels and there occurs a separate uh, category of children's literature. And Hughes argues that novelist, in order to gain that critical respectability, they needed to get that critical respectability to improve their critical, uh, improve the critical response of their novels. They, they had the solution. What was the solution? They wanted to dissociate the novel from its family readership. So that was the first solution. As I said earlier, from its inception, novel was meant for family reading. So novel, to gain that critical responsibility, critical respectability, they understood that women, children, all those intellectually low group and all those working class people who had this low literary taste, they should be excluded from this 
uh, from the readership of the novel and it should be redirected towards traditional elite audience of educated adult males outside the home at court the coffee of the house or the club so it is taking their project was to take novel out of the house and it should be something which is appreciated by educated adult males so here we exclude when you say traditional elite audience of educated adult males you exclude you mainly exclude uneducated people adult you exclude all those children and when you talk about male you exclude female so you exclude uneducated people that is working class people and then you uh, exclude uh, children and women from the readership of novel so the serious novel will earn its critical appreciation at the cost of being unsuitable for women and children so they believe that to gain that critical appreciation they need it to exclude women and children because it dealt with facts of life it dealt with facts of life means it dealt with all those prohibited topics from which these groups should be protected they shouldn't hear all those taboo topics children women they shouldn't hear all those uh, topics uh, or those discussions on topics like uh, sex religion politics etc because they believed that it is too difficult for them to understand these things they don't have the maturity to understand these things and they don't have the discrimination which actually comes with education so uh, it is only meant for all those educated adult male to deal with all those facts of life and other group the this group which contained women children and working class they should be uh, excluded because of the fact that they say that it is because of the fact that it is difficult from for them to understand because they don't have the maturity to understand and they don't have the discrimination to uh, uh, they uh, will be shocked to uh, to enter into such kind of discussion because they don't have the education to or which gives them this discretion and this actually resulted in a in a debate between henry james and arl stevens there was this uh, particular uh, discussion between henry james and arl stevens where this particular aspect of this crisis in the novel uh, were taken into consideration the crisis related to uh, dissociating family readers from novel and to uh, give it a critical respectability so basically james henry james uh, belonged to that camp where he wanted to establish novel as serious art and he does that in his in his in his famous work titled the art of fiction and in that i say he claimed that novel's basic function is to attempt to represent life to represent life and the novel shouldn't be presented by its author as just a story or as a make believe but it should be something similar to history it should represent life it should give a sense of reality it shouldn't be a story or something like a make believe but it should be something like history something akin to history and he says that novel writing is an art which undertakes immediately to reproduce life though he praises this particular work written by arl stevenson that is treasure island treasure island Uh, later was class it is classified under children's literature he says that treasure island is delightful because he says in his words because it at, appears to me to have succeeded wonderfully in what it attempts 
it has conveyed it is it has successfully conveyed what it tried to convey that's all so it is something like as it is said in this essay it is something like a qualified praise qualified praise so he compares and he also compares this work to a story by a french writer and he says that he preferred that french story to treasure island because in that story he got that sense of reality which lack which was lacking in treasure island that work actually traced the moral consciousness of a child while treasure island did not though he had this praise for uh, treasure island he uh, uh, he uh, projected these disadvantages of this particular children's work children's classic children's classic title treasure island and there was also disagreement regarding regarding this character in dostoevsky's crime and punishment james says he did not like the major character in this work uh, that is the character of rascal nico he says that he doesn't like this character because it was not objective it was not objective the character was not objective so it lacked it actually it actually made reader sympathetic to these to this character and therefore it is not objective so which prevents them from living in a book or character and keeps them standing a far off spectators of a puppet show here james claim that novels are serious in so far as they attempt to provide the intense illusion of real life so the novelist the major aim of the novelist is to provide an illusion provide an illusion of real life in their works why this al stevenson had a different opinion he completely denied this claim where uh, james required characters to be objective and the reader to be detached impartial and skeptical character should be objective and the reader who is reading that novel should be detached impartial and skeptical for james stevenson he so reader uh, he believed that reader should show involvement and there should be something like a submersion of self which showed the triumph of novel so they both belong to different camps when they discussed this nature of novel for one they sh- it should provide intense illusion of real life it should be reproduction of life as it is and uh, it should be objective and from the reader's part he should be he or uh, he should be i should say he he should be detached impartial and skeptical so it may be inferred from that a sense of reality both reader and writer requires sense of reality when they read a novel so here a writer and reader they both are entering into a contract a sophisticated contract where this a this duty of the writer is to provide that illusion of real life and the reader having constantly to judge the merit looking at how successfully he has brought the novelist has brought that illusion into practice in this particular work so when stevenson came to answer this essay he defended the notion of novel as make believe while james henry james completely had this disregard for make believe or just a story for him a novel is a reproduction of life while james while stevenson admired novels which 
which made intense demands of sympathy and identification. That is why uh, Henry James had this uh, had this disregard for this particular character in crime and punishment because it is not objective. There is this intense demands of sympathy and identification. By, but Stevenson believed that only all those great novels can or avoid that in that uh, that demands of sympathy and identification. James required characters in the novels to be uh, presented objectively, and the novelist's major aim is to prevent the reader from entering into any kind of uh, extraordinary sympathy with them. And later. He comes up another point in his essay titled The Future of Novel. Here, James shows his complete disapproval or shows his disappointment at the rising popularity of the novel. The, the popularity of the novel, it meant that there is great increase in novel readers and that actually meant that Women and children are reading these this uh, these novels. So it is women and children, the multiplication of common schools, which led to the rise of popularity of novels. So uh, here, the popularity being popular is something considered as low in the hierarchy of art. Being popular means it is excluded from mainstream, what is known as classical literature as we discussed in one of our first classes. So the popularity, he believed that this popularity of the novel will diminish its chance of finding the elite audience. All those uh, popular novels are considered to be something which is vulgar, not meant for elite audience. So commercial success therefore is a sign of declining standards. So rising popularity of the novel, it actually created some kind of a disappointment all in all those great critics of that period because rising popularity actually meant uh, it is actually equated with the declining standards of novel because it is read by women and children and all those working class people and it essentially meant uh, it is uh, it is on uh, this group which had this uh, low literary taste and it is not at all it couldn't be appreciated by the elite audience so he says that during 1880s these young novelists during the 1980s this uh, crisis happened because they demanded this freedom. These, the, these serious novelists demanded this freedom. And here, James, Henry James refers to the immense omission in our fiction because of the presence of ladies and children that in novels, which is highly condemnable if novel is to reproduce life as it is. So, because of the presence of ladies and children, these serious novelists can't, uh, can't do justice to the, uh, uh, to the essence of novel. So, as I said earlier, the novel, uh, perfect novel is, according to Henry James, a perfect novel is something which reproduces life as it is. But serious novelists can't do that because of this presence of ladies and children, they can't talk about all those facts of life, all those taboo topics because it will actually corrupt the minds of ladies and children. So what was the solution? Rising popularity of the novel, inclusion of uh, women and children, uh, everything was, was a kind of a hindrance to the development of the novel as an art. So what is the solution? So the uh, kind of a proposed solution will be 
the novel is not to write about this prohibited topics in front of the children or in front of all those weaker sex tend to be the other sex but here we see a stranger solution they came up with a strange solution what is that they wanted these groups to be excluded that child should be excluded that is they should be sent away to play and what about women this with their mothers presumably so that serious novelist can be free to pursue his art and write about all those prohibited topics so instead of the writer taking a guard when he writes a novel we see that the solution was to exclude women and children from this genre that is children should go to play and women should accompany them so that traditional elite audience of educated adult male can enjoy these serious novels and in turn we see that serious novels can have this freedom to reproduce life as it is to give out an objective sense of reality give out that illusion of real life through their work so it was a strange solution so within 20 years of the publication of the future of the novel the views expressed in it were widespread that the view that serious novel is not that children cannot read is one that children serious novel is one that children cannot read it became acceptable among writers and critics that is the only way that this novel the serious novel can gain that critical respectability and this actually this exclusion gave the impact of this exclusion led to the development of children's literature so children should read something right they are excluded from this particular for, uh, genre novel women and children are excluded from this genre so children should read something so there arose a separate genre for children alone so it had assumed the status of a fact a piece of knowledge about the world and there arose a, an assumption that children read books in a different way so it is necessary that they should have special books written for them they should be completely protected from what is known as serious novels and consequences of this segregation of children's literature from the rest can be seen in different theories in general aesthetic theory in literary theory in the theory and criticism of children's literature and in literature itself which we will discuss in the next class hope it is clear if you have any doubts please contact me thank you girls have a nice day